In truth, legal counsel for both sides discussed the issue and agreed that the in-person attendance by the county on January 13th was unnecessary in light of the pending litigation concerning the validity of subpoenas. Counsel for the Senate specifically asked whether the county intended to appear in person as a PR stunt. Counsel for the county reassured counsel for the Senate that was not their intention. County representatives nevertheless appeared at the Senate the following morning with a reporter and camera in tow. When asked why they had reneged on their previous agreement, counsel for the county described it as a miscommunication, quote, between county personnel. Now the county intentionally misrepresents the incident as an obvious setup by the Senate. Let's talk about availability of political remedies. First, the county adopted an exceedingly clear view of the Senate's right to hold the Board of Supervisors in contempt. This is their motion right here. Quote, here, petitioners have a plain, speedy, and adequate remedy at law. This is the county talking. Arizona law provides that the remedy for contempt of a legislative subpoena is with the House of the Legislature that issued the subpoena, ARS 411151. It is plain, speedy, and adequate. It is plain because the method of the enforcement is spelled out in the sta statute. It is speedy. They need only vote on a resolution. That's it. Vote on a resolution. And by the way, folks, we waive resolutions all the time. Why? Because they're just resolutions. They're procedural things. They're postcards. It is the plain, it is plain, it, it provides a, um, only a vote on a resolution and is adequate as it provides a method of ensuring compliance with the subpoena up to and including imprisonment. That's what the county said. They said, hey, you have a political, we have a political solution here. We don't need to be here in court. Why? Because they didn't think we could get a vote contempt. They thought they could peel off one of our senators. They, they thought they could peel off one of our Republican senators. They did. Sounds like they may have. I hope, I hope that's not the case. I hope that changes. Now the county is asking the judicial branch to interfere with the legislative branch's previously concerned remedy of contempt. So through this pattern of litigation for the purpose of delay and public impugnment of legislative intentions, the Board of Supervisors has exhibited unusual contempt for the investigatory powers of the Senate. The most recent lawsuit only recommits them to that path. Let's talk about uh, another lie, that they can't give us the ballots because it's illegal for them to give us the ballots. That's not true. They're protected by ARS 411152, immunity of wit witnesses. This is the plain text right here. Evidence produced pursuant to this article, AKA a subpoena, may not be used in any manner in any criminal prosecution against a natural person. And just think about it practically. Who's going to prosecute them? The county attorney? I doubt it. That's not going to happen. So there's no penalty. It's, first of all, it's not illegal. All of our attorneys say it's not illegal for them to give us the ballots. But even if it was, they're protected by ARS 41-1152. But you know what? It's clear if you violate a subpoena, if you don't comply with the subpoena, there is, there are consequences for that. Here's another lie that's being spread in, in, in the public, okay? That, that this affects the secrecy of the ballot. If we conduct a forensic audit, that's complete hogwash. The county has suggested in its court filings and public statements that its defiance is necessary to preserve the secrecy of the ballot. That is a flat out lie. It is literally impossible for the legislature or anyone else to determine how any person has voted. As anyone who, who has voted knows, ballots are anonymous. They don't contain any information that ties them back to any specific voter. The legislature is only asking for copies of anonymous ballots and other generalized data. If this information can be entrusted with the county, unelected county bureaucrats, surely it can be accessed, accessed by the people's elected representatives in the legislature. Here's another lie. 
that the legislature doesn't have the authority to investigate. The legislature's subpoena power and power to investigate is inherent in its sovereign authority under the Arizona Constitution. Both the Arizona Supreme Court and the U.S. Supreme Court have affirmed this. The Arizona Supreme Court has said, quote, it is within the powers of legislative committees to conduct investigations and to issue subpoenas and to summon witnesses generally and punish them for contempt if they refuse to answer relevant questions or produce records. That's Buell versus Superior Court. Furthermore, according to this Arizona Supreme Court, legis the legislative subpoena power is so broad and so important, it can even reach materials that are otherwise privileged. Okay? In describing the parallel authority of the U.S. Congress under the federal Constitution, the U.S. Supreme Court has said that the power of inquiry with process to enforce it is an essential and appropriate auxiliary to the legislative function and that this power to obtain information is broad and indispensable. That's Trump v. Mazars. And that's, this just makes perfect common sense. When we were given the authority under the state constitution to be lawmakers, we need to be able to collect facts. We need to be able to investigate. Otherwise, how are we gonna know how to change the laws? How are we gonna know how to make a law to fix something that we can never know what to fix? The legislature is responsible for creating the laws under which Arizona elections are conducted. To discharge this duty, it must be able to independently determine whether our current election process and systems are properly administrated, free from fraud, and produce accurate results. The Board of Supervisors is insisting that the 2020 election was conducted flawlessly in Maricopa County, and that it can pick and choose what election materials it will or won't produce to the Senate. This defiance of valid subpoenas is unlawful, and it's offensive. That's the question we can ask today. Have they complied with the subpoena? Senator Boyer, have they complied with the subpoena? They have not. They have not. Counties are creations of the state. The Arizona Supreme Court has said repeatedly and explicitly, they are inferior political subdivisions that possess only those powers that the legislature has given to them. Whatever authority the Board of Supervisors has over the conduct of elections derives from statutes enacted by the legislature. The legislature is entitled to examine whether the Board of Supervisors is competently carrying out those duties. No statute or case supports the notion that counties have some privilege to withhold documents or materials of any kind from the legislature. You know, it may be the case that the audit shows that the 2020 election was conducted perfectly and without error. It is certainly possible, though, that the audit will reveal errors, shortcomings, and vulnerabilities in Maricopa County's election systems. The key question is not whether those flaws would have changed the outcome of any race in the 2020 election. Rather, the key question is what the legislature can do going forward to safeguard the integrity of the election and ensure accuracy of the results. Fulfilling this vital duty lies at the core of the legislature's constitutional authority and responsibility. So we have seen, we're hearing somebody say they, that we want the county to work with us. We, our position has not changed since the beginning. We have said right after the election, we want the ballots and we want the machines to conduct a for forensic audit. That's it. Our position has not changed. On the other hand, the county supervisors have literally twisted themselves into a pretzel and flip-flopped every single day and try to drag this out and drag this out and drag it on, hoping when, the when we changed legislatures, when I became the judiciary chair, it would end. Oh, that'll be the end of it. Now they're pushing because they're gonna have some elections coming up. And then they keep pushing because the more they delay, they, more, they know that time kills things. They're just dragging it out. There's no good faith effort here to resolve it. It's very simple. 
We need the ballots and we need the machines. And we want to conduct a forensic audit. And they're not doing it. They are not conducting a forensic audit. The two audits they have are a joke. They're not going to find anything. There's, they're not meant to find fraud, even if there is fraud. <laughs> the bottom line is we have made a request. We've issued a subpoena, and they have given us the finger. They've refused to comply with the subpoena. That's why they're in contempt. That's why they deserve to be held in contempt. It has been months, months and months. So the four things, they can give us access to the ballots and the equipment without any consequence. We will protect the secrecy of the ballot. We have the authority to investigate and the county is blocking and obstructing and they deserve to be held in contempt. Madam President, with that, I vote aye.